Hello, Internet. My name is Donovan Fair. I'm going to be your host today on the Secure AF podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, today, we're doing something a little different. Um, as the community may know, we'd recently finished uh, SecCon 2024. Um, the concept and ideas was of the AI apocalypse. I have um, the brain force behind this, uh, Todd, here today. Hey. And we have uh, Alex was also uh, led a lot of the villages today. Um, she was in charge of the lockpick village, also the shootouts um, uh, with Nerf guns, for the record. Uh, yeah. No one was hurt Not or animals yeah, were damaged during the filming yeah, or participation of SecCon. Um, but we're kind of going to go through that, let you guys know what we're looking for in uh, 2025. Um, definitely, if you guys have any recommendations, just see us around the, the community. Let us know. We're looking for that. And uh, out of the gate, want to thank all the sponsors for uh, putting this on. It was very successful. Um, and uh, I'll do one, well, still some of Todd's thunder, one thing, and then I'm going to have him go through kind of how we came to this idea. Um, we only had, we we're only, only going to have 140, I believe. And we got pushed multiple times up to a, over 170 uh, tickets sold. Um, and we had to stop because of fire marshal code and stuff like that. But it was great. We had a great after party. But want to give you the highlights, different speakers, what happened and what we kind of took away from it. So, Todd, give us an idea on why you went this direction. Um, how do you think it impacted the community? And if, if they, I mean, if, did they learn anything? And if so, what, what do you think the best um, feedback you got? Sure. So SecCon, Alias, we've always wanted to invest in the community, uh, the local community, and especially in educating and equipping people to actually do the job welcoming students. We want them to, to be able to you know, experience what the cyber community is like. And so we had a diverse representation of speakers. Um, you know, There were some of our staff, but also staff from other companies, people in education. We really wanted to give this fully orbed view of what the cyber community is and continue to build that. We picked AI Apocalypse because back when we were picking dates, we were like, hey, September, it's Friday, September the 13th. Cool. <laughs> we should do something with that. <laughs> AI is kind of a buzzword. We're like, you know what? That makes some fun graphics. So we went with AI Apocalypse. Um, got to do some fun things with the graphics and images, badges. That was just a lot of fun. Not all of our talks were AI focused. Donovan's keynote was sort of, here's the reality of where AI is and where it's not because uh, there's a lot of hype yep. and there's there's definite potential but there's also just a lot that's not so true how did you come let's, let's take a step back like all well said but like the design like yeah how where did that come from did you have any ai guidance like how did that i mean because they look they look pretty pretty scary little little haunted machine thingies yeah so if we're going to do ai apocalypse why not use ai so uh most of the designs were either through canva or copilot is actually really great yep and you just have fun with uh, we want a zombie robot and you you do have to run through about 25 iterations before you get something that looks good you get some really wrecked stuff i have to say <laughs> so you did a lot of challenging questions you yeah yeah so like, I, people may not know what that is i think it's i think it's kind of cool like we use that as part to tie in to, for the design also as part of the, the event. But like, any challenging questions? Because I gave you something, then you're like, ah, eh, maybe less bloody. I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know. Because there's some pretty wild stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I shared some of the wrecked images with, with our folks through Teams. Um, one thing I found is just different platforms allow you to do different things. So, for example, in Canva, which is what we use for a lot of our design, you can't tell it to do something different with an existing image. You can say, I like this and generate more like this and kind of work through iterations like that. Yeah. But sometimes you hit a dead end and you have to go back to the start. Something like Copilot, it'll produce an image and you can say, cool, I really like that. Now do this with it. Um, and so that allows a lot more interactive effect on the, the design because you can say, you can even say, okay, well, actually nothing you produced this time was good. You can go back to the original design and I'll do X, Y, Z. And there's still some, you know, some coaching. Uh, there's still some limitations, but it, it is an incredibly powerful tool. So you're allowed to shame AI and be like, that's you, absolutely you the wrong can. direction. Shame. I haven't, I haven't actually tried <laughs> expletives yet, but I'm, I'm kind of tempted to. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get some really actual angry images. I don't know. I would, I would love that. That would be great. So, and then uh, another thing we'll talk about on your side. So, so the badges. Let's let's uh -huh. talk about that. Like, uh, I mean, would those look pretty cool. If you want to kind of explain people who didn't, weren't able to make it, kind of what those look like. Yeah. So again, that was an AI image. Um, what I was really looking for is something that had the skull effect, 
but then also you know the AI effect, the the robot effect. And what we came up with was a, a nice layered image. Actually, the image itself was just sort of grayscale, which was cool. But then again, you can use all sorts of AI and effects, and so you use sort of a layering effect where it, it looked like you were looking into the robot's face, which was yeah pretty terrifying. <laughs> and they just applied some some uh, heat wave filters, so it kind of pops out. And then we found a, a badge printer that, um, you know, do custom design. And then we really wanted glowing eyes. And that took a while to figure out. But uh, finally we found, like, these little, I don't know, they're probably per unit, I don't know, five cent uh, bulbs. Yeah. I was really worried. We started the conference like, man, I hope these last eight hours. We have some on our table. It's been a good solid week now. Yeah. And they are still shining brightly. So <laughs> I don't know. You might have them around for next year. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so the design of everything went really well. Um, based off the community, uh, you putting this on and, and you and your team going through all of this, what do you think out of everything? I also want to talk about the after party. Um, what do you think was mostly, what was the best thing that stood out to you from your side um, that was good about the conference? I would say it was just the engagement and excitement from everyone. We we opened the doors. Um, we had our vendors there. Again, we're, we're really thankful for them. And man, they were slammed before the opening rock marks. I mean, we turned around and it's like every booth had nine people deep and there's this line around just waiting to see everyone. So the the fact that they had the immediate effect, everybody was talking to them, engaging, seemed really exciting. Villages were great. I mean, the villages opened and I walked down the hall like, hey, I'm guessing we'll have one or two people. And I walked to the Lockpick Village and Dax is like, literally he has, he has... 12 people and he's like running from person no okay you do this this, this." and so i go next door and alex i'm like can you go help dax because he's feeling a little bit overwhelmed so the the excitement there everybody was engaged everybody was super super excited about that i had multiple people who said to me look so next year can you not have three good speakers going on at once i was like well that's the problem we had 12 speakers and all of them were good yeah and so just to hear that feedback of man i want to hear every single talk that was just so exciting. And then the vendors, they were so happy. They said, we like the the venue we had. It was kind of a little more intimate feel for the vendor space. So nobody felt like they were alone. They were like, we loved that. We got so much engagement and energy. Speakers loved, uh, you know, the speaker dinner the night before yep. and their experience there. They had great questions, great engagement. Um, we had a raffle at the end. I want to give a shout out to CC- TCM Security. They gave us some free trainings to give out. Yep. People were super thrilled about that. And then what we launched at um, yeah. SetCon was the AF Cyber Academy, where Alias is going to be providing trainings, in-person, week-long trainings taught by our staff, designed to really help people learn the, the hands-on skills. And our big grand prize was a free, um, free enrollment to one of our courses. And it was so thrilling, uh, a student from OCCC1, and she was just... Every picture we have of her is just beaming. She emailed me and she's like, (laughs) I am so thrilled I'm the first student. So that was really exciting. Yeah. And uh, we have what, uh, can you cut just for the audience, what, what, uh, what, we got four classes. Which ones are they? Yeah. So we're going to have a red team pen testing. So, you know, a lot of people want to get into that. It'll be what tools do you use? We'll spin up some machines. Real pen testing, not, not vulnerability assessment. Just so we're clear scanning. It's real pen testing. It's not scanning. You're not going to be sitting there running a scanning. It's actually, you're going to be using tools um, that our guys use, figuring out how to get in when you get roadblocked. What do you do about that? We're going to have uh, blue team threat hunting. So, you know, you've got the offensive from the defensive. What do you do when you see a threat? How do you find threats? How do you mitigate those threats? Yeah. That'll include some, hey, if you're in a SOC, this is what this looks like. This is what you do. We're going to have IR and digital forensics because those go together. IR on the front end. What do you do when somebody's compromised? What does that look like? How do you work with machines and the digital forensics? Okay, how do you figure out what happened? How'd they get in? And so the skill in that. And then the last one's going to be compliance and auditing. So you hear all the things you do, but really those all play into what are things that gov- that uh, businesses are required to do and how do you make sure you're doing that well? Yeah, that's what marketing has got it figured out. Did you hear that? Anyway, so as you know, if you guys are interested in that, um, uh, AFCyberAcademy.com. Uh, so that's on the other side. But um, um, 
Alex, uh, newly hired, uh, made it through the internship. Ooh, Congratulations. Did. Thank you. Um, so tell us kind of what, so you kind of manned a lot of the, um, a lot of the uh, Nerf the gun, villages. the shootout. Yeah, yeah. So I went over Good. there. We had uh, like lock picking set up, how to learn how to do that. And then we had um, like physical door break-ins as well. And then we did our lock pick gun yep. fights, which I love those. I think they're, they're my favorite. <laughs> I love trying to find people that have no idea how to lock pick and just kind of throw them in over there. Yeah. Um, but of course everyone, you know, they're like, I don't know if I want to, but everyone just absolutely loved the lock picking. Like Todd said, it was just completely full. Um, we had people in there almost all the time and we tried to get people to come into the door or break in room cause it was right next door, yeah. but like nobody wanted to come in there, but we did get some people towards the end and people were actually making their own, um, under the door tools, which were really cool. I um, saw a guy carrying awesome. one around yeah. and I thought, did somebody flat out steal our under door tool? Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. But we, we brought all the wire and stuff yeah, yeah, and they okay. made them all, but yeah, it was really cool just to see everyone get super involved. I got to talk to a lot of students um, which was really fun because you know I obviously just got done being a student yep. thank goodness um, but it's it was just great to network with everyone and like you both have said like just the excitement like I've been to you know quite a few different conferences and you know like um, speaking events and and things like that and this one really was different at least for me like I have never seen as much excitement and people that really wanted to learn and and be a part of something uh, at, uh you know at, at this one was definitely the best so it was it was a great time well that, that's good to hear because I'm usually Todd and I run your rooms panic mode the whole time yeah, freaking just out. like what's happening oh my god we're out of coffee this is the worst this will be the worst conference ever <laughs> They did refill it pretty quick, though. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah, yeah they because this the yeah, coffee has to be hundred percent. It's just got to keep that keep running. Going. Um, yeah, no, I think, um, and also I, I kind of made a joke about me. They're like, "When do you speak, Donovan?" I was like, "Oh man, I well." So here's the deal: is that way, if no one wanted to come to my my speech, I locked you guys in with lunch. So yeah. in order you if you want food, you have to come and sit, uh, listen to me talk. But um, it was good. Um, I didn't get to get to a lot of talks, but shame on me. But I was also, you know, trying to make sure. Every... You also had people chasing you yeah. down because they have it's... to get the stamp. Yeah. 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 We did have our passports. Yeah, the passport. That was really cool, too. I, mm -hmm. A lot of people like that. The audience may not know. We had um, the typical vendor cards where you go and you, you put your stamp on each vendor, whoever it is. But on the back, we had you meet. Five, five? Okay. Yeah. You had to go talk or ask for a stamp from five different alias people. We had black shirts on. And you had to get the stamp, but it also gave you an extra ticket for the raffle, which I thought was really cool. And it, what it, what we're trying to do is um, at the what we were really trying to do is because a lot of um, technical people, this may sound weird. You guys are really awkward um, and it, it's, it's hard true. for you to break ice. So if you're like if you don't say anything because you don't know what to say to like me or Todd, you just put your little card out there and then Todd and I will we'll get it kicked off for you. We'll yeah. break the ice. Yeah get a little people out of their shell, um, give them a little social um, experience in what we do and what the culture is of the uh, cyber security industry in Oklahoma. Um, so that was that was a really great idea. We're gonna pro we're definitely going to do that next year. Um, Tanner made them answer a trivia question. Oh, did he really? And then he ran away so that they couldn't find him. Wow. He made himself, so he made himself like the, the, I don't know, where's Walt, where's Tanner? Where's they Tanner? had to go find him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not shocked by that at all. Yeah. Makes total sense. Yeah, so again, my talk was kind of what, what are we encountering, encountering today? I could speak on mine was basically we have people that can get your voice and uh, it's mm -hmm. what, cyber kidnap. Basically, mm -hmm. they call your parents and say that, hey, I've been kidnapped and the attacker gets on the phone and people have fell for it. Um, one one lady, I don't know why, she her daughter, this happened to her, but her daughter was upstairs in her room. I don't know. I shouldn't go look, but, you know. <laughs> neither here nor there but uh no judgment <laughs> yeah they talked about having you know uh keywords to identify that it's you whatever your passcode is for your parents or 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 your, your spouse or whatever it is so that was pretty interesting and then the other one uh was the transfer uh the video one um mm -hmm. of the uh international company in hong kong where they were able to basically get people's face off a website because they had the sea level staff it was an emergency tra or secret transfer, which the guy was a little leery, but he's like, well, let's just jump on a call. So he called a video call and he had board members around the table and it was his face, but he was staring at him. He had the board around him and that's how they were able to get that transferred. It was, it was like $25 million. Yeah, I think that's what he said, yeah. like $25 million transfer. Yeah, absolutely crazy. So it, it does exist, I, but I, you know, we, we have other talks about it. 
Um, it is, I think it is overplayed right now today until we have like Terminator robots, which, you know, that's kind of happening a little bit right now. But I mean, as a, as a, as a business risk, um, it, we go back to the social engineering. Yeah. Again, like, I feel like, I feel like we got past this two years ago. We're back at it again. So social engineering's back on the menu. So yeah. that's my favorite saying. And, and training your, training your people like, okay, in that situation, yep. what would you do? And running them through a simulation of, Hey, I call and say, you need to do a transfer. What's yep. your play? And then also, I I'll, I'll do know Kemet's because we talked about it. Kemet, um, you know, he's 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 policy guru. Uh, Jonathan Kemet, he's our uh, CISO here, and he has he's he got certified in uh, like AI compliance mm-hmm. on, and that's just like what exactly are you feeding this machine, and who has access to it? Because we've done a pen test where we were able to get a hold of a server that was hosting one, and we. We asked if we could poison it, and they said no. But we were going to see if we could start getting it to spit out false information because people utilize that in a business. You may not know this. They utilize that. For me, it's just like a really, really smart uh, knowledge-based system really now. Um, I know that's going to change, but I feel like that's what we're seeing today. Um, And then maybe maybe a nice little internal Google. Um, But, yeah, so we had access to one of those because it had default credentials. So it was it was. It, I was sad that we couldn't do anything, um, but you know it, it's fine. So, and that's kind of where we're at today. Those talks were most mostly about that. A lot of good pen test stuff. Ones, a red team stuff, blue team uh, policy. We had a, we had a good good lineup, man. Yeah. Um, how many speakers we have total? Well, with you doing the keynote, we had thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Yeah, and and again, going back to that. I was laughing because again, people uh, happily complained to me that they didn't know who to go to. Yep. Um, too many good talks. And we're like, well, I mean, look, well, I said, well, look at the Nexus. They're like, well, all of those are good too. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what to say. I haven't had speakers say that. They said, man, you put me up against these two talks, which I want to go to. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. Whole day, <laughs> was, whole day was that way. Yeah. But a, a good problem. So, um, so I guess, um, yeah. And the, I think the villages went well. So going forward, um, what are we looking for, for obviously we're doing 2025. Yep. Um, I know it's really early, but what are we thinking? What have we learned from that? Um, what do we what do we think of to kind of grow this thing next year? Yeah, so one thing we've realized is we need more tickets. So next year we're going to be able to grow our attendance. Um, you know, I would say some of you waited until the day before and didn't have the option to come. So when <laughs> we publish the early bird tickets, maybe, you know, go ahead and grab some of those. Um, I would say we're just going to build on the energy and excitement. I think a lot of people were already excited about, hey, what's coming next year? Yep. You know, we want to see this again. We want to have the same excellent speaker lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're going to see more villages because those were popular, and we need mm-hmm. people to not only go into the lockpick right, village, yeah, we need, we or we need two lockpick villages. I don't know. <laughs> them, uh, so like if that. you know, we have ideas, but it, but also when we put out a call for papers, if you have an idea for a village or there's something that you're really skilled at or really enjoy, toss it our way, and you might get to you might get to run a village because I think that hands-on element people really enjoy yeah, and really like. Really yeah. Fun. So you'll see more of those. Again, same quality speaker lineup. Um, we're just really hoping to, to grow and expand. We'll mm-hmm. do something similar. We don't know the theme yet. We'll roll that out in the next few weeks. But we want to do something fun again, some, something that really is engaging and interesting, gives us some cool badges and swag. Absolutely. Um, Most so, important. So probably the next couple of weeks you'll be seeing that. You'll be able to, to register to keep up with all the news and information and uh yeah we're just we're really excited i think this is going to be yeah. great we had the after party yeah absolutely so um capital view event center hosted us it was a great venue pizza drinks there's no agenda nobody even got up and talk talked it was just come hang out you've been either on your feet or sitting in conference sessions all day yeah so you can stand at a table or you can sit at a table and just hang out i think that was that was uh you know i hadn't gotten a chance to talk to you some of our speakers and attendees mm-hmm. during the All conference because yeah. we we're running around yeah. like crazy just to sit down and talk. And, you know, part of that's what their experience of the conference was, but also just, you know, getting to know them. That was a really fun experience. Yeah. And kind of adding to that, you guys may be surprised is we, we definitely, you know, Donovan always wants to grow the biz, but like this one specifically, we, we try to keep everything as low as possible. Yep. Um, even Alias is a heavy sponsor of this, so yeah. we're not out here making a ton of money. The after party was fully covered, drinks and pizza. It was wonderful. 
Um, and uh, it's more, again, us going pushing back in the community because we want people to get in cybersecurity. We want people to understand the risks that's involved in businesses. And if they don't come work for us, they can take that knowledge and go yep. somewhere else and protect, uh, again, the industry of IT, technology, uh, and the state of Oklahoma and Texas. We're pretty heavy in those two states. Um, so kind of wanted to iterate if you guys, again, ideas, uh, thoughts, ideas for, for new, um, new villages, please let us know. And then kind of going back to Alex, what, um, so on the door thing, I didn't know we were making, sorry, that kind of intrigued me. I didn't know we were making, yeah, under the, under tell me about it. Tools. Yeah, yeah was, it was super fun. Okay. So people saw us doing it. And Can then, you explain that? They may not know. Like how to make it? Okay. Like what, what, is, what is a tool? What, like is, that it, like? what yeah. is it? Okay. Yeah. So typically, at least the ones that we use and a lot of other people use most commonly, it's a long wire. Um, thick enough so that way you know it can handle some weight because basically what you do is you stick the wire underneath the door um, and then you usually have like kind of the wire hook in a little bit so then you hook on a piece like a thread either like yarn or twine or you know anything that you can use to pull it um, and you stick it in there and up and basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to use like the hook that you have the thread attached to to grab onto the handle and then you pull the thread to pull the handle down and push open the door so when you're doing it you're kind of like crouched down and a lot of times you have to kind of headbutt the door to get it to open <laughs> which is quite funny to watch people do um but yeah making them it's not super hard um lots of people have different ways some people prefer to do like the hook on the outside of the door i think it's better to kind of get the hook inside because then you can like pop it up and push it flush against the door and then get the handle but if you need all like actual transactions of what she's doing go to youtube and watch <laughs> her hand <laughs> signals yeah, that I'm she's like, doing there to, well and actually the, the self-design came out of tanner does a series uh we yeah. thought it was called will it open yeah and so that actually came out. out of him um he literally just goes to the hardware store and it's Unrolls like it. grab stuff and brings it back and says it's will it open because sometimes you can't but that yeah. was one he figured it out and like you know what just take all that stuff to setcon because yeah. you figured out how to do it so what a cool piece of swag like kids carrying around a under door tool <laughs> that is that is a unique thing you are not yeah. walking out of most conferences with yeah no a tool you can use to break into doors Ethical. Your own, your yeah. own doors, not your, your own, own doors, doors. Your own doors, doors. Yeah. yeah, it's just your own. And, and a lot of people kind of, some people are like, man, why are we doing that? It's because uh, we still think doors actually are safe and protect us. Uh, and all we're trying to do is everything's vulnerable. You're never going to protect your house as best you can because someone could just bulldoze the side of your wall over. Yeah. But there's don't be don't be a low hanging fruit. Yeah, and that usually will protect you from a lot of uh, uh, hacking attacks. And then that goes. It's it's a hands on activity that people learn, and then they can use that knowledge in their business because they're like, oh well, oh so we don't have RDP open in the entire planet Earth. Oh, that's bad. Okay, yeah. having just yeah exactly. Yeah, we just talked had one about that IR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that. That's really yeah, bad. Really bad. Uh, so kind of conference again. I think it was a full success. Um, Definitely, and uh, we had, uh, I guess, some of the gifts, the rest of the gifts, the raffles. Can you mm -hmm. kind of go through some of those? Yeah, so we had a couple of our vendors uh, provide raffle items, which was super exciting. Fortinet gave away a pickleball set, which nice. is pretty cool. Yeah, that was cool. Um, although one of the attendees, very IT, was like, you realize we don't exercise. So I thought that was a funny comment. <laughs> Wrong as, they were, as they were giving away the, the set, and I was like, I don't know, I would have probably waited to say that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Armor Point <laughs> gave out uh, a pretty cool growler. So, you know, okay. take get your beer. Oh, it was uh, um, sealed, so, you know, it actually stayed for a while. So that was a pretty cool Yeah, cool it's gift. cool. Yeah. And then we had, uh, we had a Shark Jack okay. that we gave out. Yep. So... Hack five. That came, yeah. Hack, hack five. Shout out to them. Yep. And so that person gets to play around with that for a while, on his own stuff, on his own legally, you know. Yep. And then TCM <laughs> Security, they were super generous. We really appreciate it. They gave three one month um, uh, sponsorships to to their academy, and then their grand prize for their grand prize was a one year uh, subscription. So somebody gets a full year of you know access to their trainings. Um, they were actually even open, like, hey, if somebody already has the subscription and wants to go after one of their lower tier uh, tests, they yep. would actually pay for the certification. Sweet. So we're super, and everybody who got those was just beyond excited, like, this is so cool. And then, yep. like I said, the grand prize was, uh, you know, your enrollment first student has uh, the AF Cyber Academy. So people were really excited about the raffle items. Yep. Every time we announced one, you could just see, like, everything. Um, <laughs> and when we announced the uh, the AF Cyber Academy, like uh, everybody sort of did 
this number. Yeah. And then when she won, there was, you know, we're all excited Yay. for kind of clapping. Yeah, clapping. Yeah. yeah. Good job. I, I hate wish you. I had it. Yeah. yeah. So I have me so a drink of pizza now because yeah. I lost. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess uh, kind of wrapping up here. Um, is there anything else? Obviously, we kind of want to reach out to everybody for any feedback. We did send uh, the the um, vendors and the guests like a review for yeah. feedback. If okay. you attended, you got a survey. We'd really appreciate it if you'd fill that out. It's both, hey, what did you really love about this one? But also, what would you love to see next time? Or what were things that you know, you were like, hey, I think this could be approved. We really take that feedback seriously yep. because this event is for you. And so we want to make sure that this is the best experience you have that you get the most value out of coming to SecCon. Okay, Alex, in, in closing, anything that we may have missed that people need to know about SecCon? I don't think so. It was a great time. If you weren't there, you should have gotten your tickets because it was great. Definitely, listen, listen to definitely her. get those early bird tickets next time because, yeah. you know, you'll get to see all of us. And it'll be a great yeah, time. That's right. And you'll get to, you know, get your own under the door tool. Yeah, and now I'll say the last part, which I was super pumped. I don't, I get them. I, I may seem like I'm really social, but I actually don't like talking to people. But it was good for me because people had to come and get the stamp. And mm -hmm. so people are like, man, I get to talk to Donovan, mm -hmm. which I have imposter syndrome. I don't really know what that means. I just work here. But the other people that I got to talk to, because there's very intelligent people in our industry, um, they probably wouldn't have the courage to approach them. And I think it really made everyone feel welcome. And mm -hmm. typically conferences or whatever, you know, it's a... It's an old IT stigma. People yeah. make people feel stupid or they ask stupid questions. That's not what we do at all. But right. I think them knowing that and seeing that, I think it went a long way. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Well, in closing, thank you so much for joining a Secure AF podcast. Look forward to SecCon 2025. Thank you so much for watching, and y'all have a great afternoon or morning, internets. See you.